Hello and welcome to another episode in the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be talking about duct typing. Now, duct typing in programming is a type system used in dynamic languages where the type or class of an object is less important than the method it defines. When duct typing, you do not check the types, but rather you check for the presence of a given method or attribute. Why is it called duct typing? Well, duct typing gets its name from the saying, or rather it gets its name from the colloquial saying, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then it must be a duck. Now, I want to go ahead and introduce a new keyword, and that keyword is the is keyword. The is keyword is a keyword you can use to check if a value or object is of a certain type. The is keyword will return a Boolean value. It will either return true or false. In our first example, 5 is int, this value will return true. The literal value 5 is in fact an integer. Now in the second example, frog is animal. Now, I've left a return value blank because this will depend if our frog class is in fact an animal class, or rather if our frog class has the animal class as part of its inheritance chain, it will in fact return true. However, if our frog class does not have the animal class as part of its inheritance chain, we will in fact return false. Duct typing is better explained through code. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. We have an animal class that extends a node. We've given it the name animal, and it has a function called fly. And all it does is print out to the console. Now we have another class called duck class, and our duck class extends the animal class. We've given this class the name duck, and we are overriding our super class's fly function with our own function. In this case, all we print out is this duck flies. Now we have a third class called the circle class. Notice how this class does not inherit from anything. We've given the name circle, and we've also given it a function called fly. Now, if we look at our scene script that runs all the code in the application when we press the play button, Notice how we have three class objects, animal, duck, and circle, all assigned their appropriate classes. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what duck typing is. As you can see here, we have a function called let it fly, and it accepts a parameter. Now in this function, we use the parameter followed by the dot notation followed by a function fly. In GDScript, it can also be referred to as duck typing, because we only care about whether a object has a method versus what the object is a type of, what you'll see is we will enter this line of code and execute it. Now, if the flying object has the fly function, it will fly. So like the colloquial saying, if it quacks like a duck, then it must be a duck. In this case, if it flies, then it must be an object that knows how to fly. So going back to our three objects, when we run the let it fly function and we pass in our class objects, animal, duck, and circle, we're going to go ahead and execute the fly function in each of our class objects. Our animal is going to call its fly function, our duck is going to call its fly function, and our circle is going to call out its fly function, fly function. Now, what happens if I try to pass a value into our let it fly function where an object or even a value doesn't have the fly function inside it? Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Here we have the let it fly function and we're passing the literal integer 5. Now, if we go down to our let it fly function, when we run the program, we're going to pass the literal value 5 into our flying object. We're going to go ahead and move into the next line. We will then call our integer value 5, followed by the fly function. When you execute this line of code, you will throw an error. In this case, the error is going to output integer doesn't have the fly function. So as you can see, even though duct typing has their pros, which is it's able to execute functions on many different types of objects that so happen to have the same method name, the cons or the negatives for, for this duct typing is that anything can be passed and we won't know if it has, in this case, the fly function until after execution. 
So basically, if you make a mistake, you can throw an error in your game. Let's go ahead and add some type safety to our duck typing. As you can see here, we have a function called animal flies. We have our parameter called animal object, and we've data typed it with the animal class. So basically, you would think that animal flies function can only accept in its parameter a value that is basically of the type class called animal. And you would be 99% correct. If we were to try to pass an integer into animal flies function, we will get an error before we even run the game code. Now, if you try to pass an object class, you will actually run this code. What will happen is if your object class does not inherit from the animal class, or if the animal class is not part of the inheritance chain, your object will go through but it will be casted as a null. For example, if we were to pass in our circle class here, even though our circle class has the fly function or the fly method, because circle is not part of the object class animal, or rather because the circle class does not have the animal class in its inheritance chain, the value will be then casted to null. And so what will happen is we will pass the null value into animal object. We will try to run animal object with the fly method and we will get an error and basically that error will be no value does not have a fly function one thing to note is if you inject the actual class name followed by the new method you will get an error thrown in your face before you even press the play button it will tell you that circle is not type animal however if you were to put your class into an object making an object class and then you take that object class and then try to run the function despite having the parameter value being typed as an animal class you're still going to run the code it's just that the circle instead of passing its value as an object it will be again casted as null you will try to run the fly method on the null value and you will get an error during runtime now there is a way to avoid this and that's what i'm going to show you now in our last example we have a method called animal flies safely and of course we're passing it the circle class object now in our animal flies safely method we have again a parameter that is of type animal. Now normally this also works 95% of the time. So to cover the other 5% of mishandlings, we have two options. First, we can take the animal object and check if our animal object is equivalent to no. Because we know that our functions, even though they have type safety, will pass in other objects and just cast them into no, we know that if our animal object is no, we don't want to run the code. To basically stop the function, you just put out or write out an empty return statement. So in this case, if we pass the circle object class, even though we run our code, because it fails the first check, because no will be equal to no or equivalent to no, we're just gonna exit the code. Therefore, we've covered 100% of our base. We truly do have a function that will only run if we pass a class that has the animal class as part of its inheritance chain. You also have a second option, and that is to use the is keyword. Now the is keyword will return true or false depending if the class after the is keyword is part of your inheritance chain. Let's go ahead and take a look at option number two. If our animal object is in fact an object that has the animal class in its inheritance chain, the boolean value that will be returned from the is keyword will be true. And from that true value, we will now compare that to see if it's equivalent to the boolean false. Because true does not equal false, we're we're going to go ahead and skip this if statement. Basically, if our animal object is in fact an animal, we can go ahead and do whatever we want. However, if we were to pass in an object that is not in fact an animal object, for example, if we were, if this were to be a circle, and since circle is not an animal, because animal is not part of the inheritance chain of the circle, we're going to go ahead and evaluate this to false. And from that false value, we're going to go ahead and compare that to our other false value. And because false is equivalent to false, we're going to, of course, print our statement. Basically, animal class is not part of the inheritance chain, and we're going to exit the code with our return statement. So again, these are two options available to you if you want to make sure that only an object of a specified class type 
actually makes it through, just because of how Godot handles class objects when you put them inside functions. Well, I hope you learned a lot in this episode. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel, and thank you to everyone who has pressed the like button. Please feel free to leave comments down below. I went ahead and put the GitHub link in the description down below, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time.